Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for joining us on the Vintage Electronics channel. You see it right. Today we're going to be talking about the 1571 disk drive. Now, I know everybody's partial to the 1541. It's been around a long time. It was the original one that came out with the Commodore 64, and it's a great drive. The 1571, however, uh, added a uh, double head, so it could actually read data and write data on both sides of the disk at the same time. Now, it did this with double-sided, double-density disks, which is really a great idea, but a disk that was written in a 1541 drive that actually had to be flipped over physically actually changed the rotation of the disk, so they really didn't work back and forth well. So as a result, most of the disks ended up working in 1541 mode anyway. Now, the 1571 was actually pretty pricey. This ad from 1989, which is four years after it was introduced, actually has the thing on sale for $219.95, which today is like $447, so it was very, very expensive for its time, especially when you can see in the ad that the 1541 was substantially less money. Now, my 1571 actually spent about 30 years in storage, and it wasn't kind storage either, as you can see by the way this thing looks. Now, it did actually power up. So, me being me, I got a little bit hopeful, hurried up and got excited and found a cord for it to see if this thing would actually read a disk. Uh, it's the first time I've been able to use a disk drive on my 128 in a while, so I'm a little bit excited. Now, as you guys know, Commodore uses a proprietary serial cable for it. Uh, they're still available on eBay, which is where I found this one, which is actually pretty exciting to me. Now, a quick side note, uh, it was interesting, the 1541 drive... Uh, being single-sided as it was, was a 170 kilobyte drive. When this 1571 came out, being double-sided, it actually gave you a whopping 340 kilobytes of storage, which was pretty big for the day. So let's give it a shot now. I got my old Jeopardy game disc out. We're going to relive the 1980s here. So now all we got to do is type in load, menu, comma 8, comma 1, and this thing should work, right? And it doesn't getting a green flashing light now with my experience tells me I know what that means I'm getting a disk read error the green light generally means that it can't quite read the disk so now all the scenarios are going through my mind my heads could be out of alignment the thing could be toast from storage for all those years I could have a dead drive it could cost me a fortune it could take me months to figure this thing out but let's start off simple so first thing we're going to do is try to take this thing apart first thing to take off the lever in the front just pulls straight out. Now, Commodore is pretty deliberate when they put these things together. They're pretty easy to take apart. We just have four screws on the bottom of the unit, one on each corner that holds everything in place. Once we get this thing apart, then we'll start with the basics first and see what we can figure out, see if we can get this thing working easily. Now, my experience is it's never the simplest thing. But that's just my luck, so we'll see how this thing turns out. Maybe the uh, previous owner of this drive had a little bit better luck than I did. So now we'll turn this thing over, get the screws out, and don't lose one like I almost did. But that's the way it goes for me. So we'll get this thing turned over, and then the lid actually just lifts straight off. It's pretty easy to take apart. Now looking inside, it's pretty clean. I'm going to check and make sure first that all of the connectors are pushed down nice and tight. And then we're going to use some alcohol and a cotton swab and make sure we get both of those read and write heads clean. Now make sure you do the top and the bottom on the 1571 because it is a dual head drive. So we'll get this all cleaned up. We're going to let the alcohol dry for a minute. And then let's hook everything back up and see if this thing's going to work for us. So it powered up just fine. We'll power up the computer here. Now it's going to flash and grind a little bit. That's doing its self-check. We can see the head move back and forth. That means it uh, looks like so far it's working. So let's try this Jeopardy game disc again. Back in, we'll type it up, and lo and behold, we're actually loading something. Drives grinding away back and forth. So it looks like we're good. Now I did while I had this open, I went ahead and checked the integrated circuits inside, made sure all the chips were in, this little sensor here. Uh, registers with a hole in the disk that lets the drive know when the position is in the right spot. So I did go ahead and check that, make sure it was clean, there was nothing in the way. And now it looks like it's working. I've actually got a game of Jeopardy going. Life's good. I'm back in 1985. Uh, so looks like we've got this thing fixed. So next step, let's get the computer turned off. And we'll get the disk drive turned off. Get the uh, disk back out of it. 
get this thing taken back apart on the front that lets that move a little bit easier to get the lid back on and we're gonna go ahead and get this put back together now it's just the opposite of how we took it apart the lid snaps in the front goes down and then all we gotta do is flip the thing over and put our four screws back in the back of it now I will say it's not always this easy uh, I was a little bit surprised with this drive that it ended up just being dirty heads probably uh, but that's not surprising with a unit that's been in storage for 30 years. Luckily, it was stored with the lever in the down position, so the head was locked down. A lot of times, if that lever's open and things laying around, you could actually warp the plastic piece that uh, rides the head back and forth. That can actually cause your heads to come out of alignment. In that case, there are alignment discs out there and techniques for aligning the heads on one of these drives. And maybe that's something we'll do another video on later on in the uh, process. This was just kind of a quick video since I got this drive. I uh, just wanted to throw something together for you guys that are out there working on these old Commodore machines. So luckily we've got it going. Uh, everything's in good working order now. The next step with this is going to be cleaning it up and also my 128. They're both kind of in bad shape. But hey, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.